welcome Skeeter Hall, Betty Estes, and Karen Litsky to Parties Extra. I'm Helen Ford Wallace, and we are at the Oklahoma's Video Studio to talk about the McDowell Allied Arts Club of Oklahoma City. Welcome you all. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Skeeter, the really good news is that you've had the 100th celebration of the McDowell Club of Oklahoma City. So tell us about that. And okay. Tell us about how you got organized a long time ago with right. 27 members. I'm going to tell you about, first of all, it's about Edward McDowell, who was not just a pianist, but he was a, uh, he was a composer and was considered the greatest composer of America. He has gotten all sorts of accolades over the years, was on the stamp, our postage stamp. Uh, he has just received many. But he was born a long time ago, in 1860, so he's really not with us anymore <laughs> at that particular year. But when he was 23, he went to Germany, to Frankfurt, Germany, to, uh, to work on his art, which was uh, playing the piano, and became a professor. And uh, there was a lady in, in uh, the United States whose name was Marion Nevins, and she was also a pianist, born three years earlier than him. but they decided they would send her to Paris to study and learn in the early 1900s, actually the late 1800s, because if you wanted to become a big, great pianist or artist, you went overseas to study. And the, he was her instructor, and that's how they met. And eventually they got married, they fell in love, and they got married, and they ended up coming back to, Oklahoma, uh, to the United States mm -hmm. and, pre and being there. The problem was he came back and he went to work in Boston for Columbia University as, uh, and took over the whole music department. Was doing great and had been composing and working on his music all these years and she was a staunch supporter of his and it helped him every which way she could. But after just about five years, they got a new president at the club who differed with him and who wanted to close the whole music department down at the college, and he left. Very stressful. And they went to a place called Peter, Peterburg, uh, New Hampshire, and uh, found a place out there about uh, 60 acres in the woods, and he loved it. And so they, moved, they bought the farm, they moved out there. He and she built a cabin. And then while he was there, he ended up building another cabin about a half a mile away, and he started composing and loved it. And uh, life went on for him, and his mind started going bad. It was due, they think, to the trauma of leaving the college, plus he was hit by a cab, and he suffered uh, head damage. And so um, he, the last two years, he really had a lot of brain problems, much like we would probably call Alzheimer's today. Mm -hmm. He died when he was only 47, a great loss to everyone. But he told her before he died, gee, I wish we could have this, all of this land could put more cottages out here and other artists could come and could... Um, and that's what happened. Yes, and that's what she did. Uh -huh. And she ended up going out all over the United States. She got back in in Peterborough and she came to Oklahoma City to one of her dear friend's homes. And another lady had been to that colony, and uh, so they decided to start mm -hmm. a club here. And they and called the, it the McDowell. McDowell. Uh -huh. And along with almost, oh, there were almost 400 clubs nationwide that she started. We started out with 23 people, and in less than three months we had 123 people. And you've had as many as 800 in your club As before. many as 810, mm -hmm. I believe, that we said that there would be. So uh, we worked and we uh, had people come to our meetings and uh, we supported the, the colony, as did all the others, with their money for training more and more of their artists. And, and they had over 8,000 artists. You brought in fabulous artists. Tell we about brought that. in. We brought in. I don't know if you know Aaron Copeland, but we brought him in. We brought uh, Pulitzer Prize winners. We brought. Uh, let me see if I can find so you Leonard yes. Bernstein, Thornton uh -huh. Wilder. It, it was artists, and it was yes. um, painters, and it sculptors, was sculptors, writers, ventriloquists, poets. <laughs> <laughs> we I had that. we had a ventriloquist, which I I was you, privileged was to it. get to entertain <laughs> a few times at our club. And harpist. A harpist. Gu guitarist. We had everything you can vocal. imagine. I mean, vocal. Vocal. Uh -huh. 
So I mean, all the art was covered yes. in these meetings with speakers or entertainment mm -hmm. or you all had great meetings. And we have dance. We had any kind of art uh -huh. that was really, really good art. Mm -hmm. We had, they were really good in going. So did you all meet once a month? Have you met once a month? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All these years, hundred years, you all. One, someone, no. <laughs> <laughs> someone. No. Our club, well, yeah. our club was one hundred. Our club was is one hundred years old this season. Mm -hmm. It is one hundred years old. Isn't that amazing? Yes, it is, and we love it. We get, these people all come, and we have some of the most incredible artists of every which way you can imagine. And you met all over town. You met in the yes, governor's we, mansion mm -hmm. one time. Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. More than once. We, mm -hmm. we met Mrs. John A. Brown was one of our members. Mrs. Lighty Marlin was one. John A. Mac, Mac, uh, Mecklenburg, his wife, was one. Mm -hmm. We've had, it was the most prestigious club in Oklahoma City at one time. And like we said, we had over 800 members at one time. And scholarships, you gave scholarships encouraging high school students. Tell us how okay. that Yes, goes. I, I was the scholarship chairman, uh -huh. and uh, we gave scholarships out starting in 2004 uh, to graduating high school students who were going to pursue their art on a college level. That was all our requirement was, and they could spend the money any way they wanted to. So over that period of time, we gave out 38, um, is that right, 38 scholarships. Uh, and for, t no, 55 scholarships for a total of $29,000. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these young people have gone on in their teaching in our schools now, our local schools and uh, universities. We had a girl that wanted to do costume design and she ended up as a intern on Saturday Night Live for a year. And uh, that was kind of exciting. And anyway, they've, they've really done well. And uh, we, uh, we've, so we had money left over at the end of this, mm -hmm. and we were trying to decide what we wanted to do with it. Mm -hmm. And we found this uh, agency called Arts Partnership for Oklahoma City Public Schools, which is part of, it's under the Arts Council of Oklahoma City. And they, uh, what they did was identify schools that uh, needed help, that didn't have any art programs. In, in, I was just looking this up. In 2016, 39 of 54 elementary schools in Oklahoma City public school system lost art programs. Uh, there were six left with no art teacher or music teacher. So what they decided to do was to bring in uh, teachers to these schools in need, and that's what that's where we stepped in and gave them our final contribution of five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. And so I just got a, a letter back from uh, Peter Delisi a couple of days ago, who's the executive director of the Arts Council, to thank us, mm -hmm. and that was that was really nice. He says, uh, "Thank you for supporting Arts Council with your generous gift of five thousand dollars." And thank you for making our mission of bringing the arts and the community together a reality. So we felt this was the perfect way to um, finish our, our community service. And it, it's exactly what we were, our, our motto is to uh, support the, the arts. Mm -hmm. So That's fabulous. Yeah. That's so a great, and you have supported also the colony. You all sent money. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Every uh -huh. year we send money uh -huh. to the colony, too. We have many letters in the archives at UCO mm -hmm. from Marion McDowell, Edward McDowell's wife, uh, thanking us and coming down to see us and grace us with her. And she played the piano for us when she, when she would come. And just to thank us for the support, she said Oklahoma City was one of the biggest supporters of the colony. They now have 600 acres and not just six cottages, oh, wow. but they now have 30, almost 35, 35 or 36 cottages. And uh, they have put out over, they have uh, serviced over 8,000 uh, artists Isn't that who amazing? have gone on from there. Um, just for a point of information, those col the, at the colony, um, the cottages, you could stay in your cottage, tell about that, how, and you, be by yourself. Yes, you can. And create. And that's the whole purpose, mm -hmm. because Edward McDowell wrote one of his best pieces that's still being played in schools and all. It's called To a Wild Rose. Today, it's been played millions of times, and he, he wrote it along with many others in this cottage by himself. He would go back to their main cottage that they lived in, and he would say, Jeff, I just wish that others could come and enjoy the quiet, the solitude, and they could create better. 
And so she promised him she would do that. And did. She would make sure that that and, happened. And you said and they brought their did. dinners to them? And they brought them, knocked on the door, and just set it in mm -hmm. front of the door and left. There was no communication. And then in the evenings, after they'd been there all day, they all walked or biked, mm -hmm. however they could get through the woods, to the main building, mm -hmm. ate dinner together, and then visited a little bit. And then they went to sleep. They went into the rooms and slept. Next day, got up and went back to the cottages. And this went on for them for four to six weeks. Mm -hmm. Some were there even eight weeks. That's amazing. Yes. Well, the, the ba all all of this is kind of bittersweet because the bad news is that you all have had your final meeting, final meeting, and that's that's the way it is. So tell us about that. Okay, I'll let Betty as our president. Well, we did recently celebrate 100 years of supporting and encouraging artists and students here in Oklahoma and trying to help them uh, reach their own unique and individual hopes and dreams. And that's our purpose, uh, the vision of maintaining and uh, supporting the Edward McDowell and Marion, and then they went ahead and established the colony. And so our scholarships and fellowships actually have helped the students go to the colony, helped individuals, not students, some from here went, mm -hmm. to go to the colony and, uh, as Skeeter said, enjoy the whole place, do what they wanted to, when they wanted to, but they were able to do it without a financial burden which in and itself without, is and without marvelous mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. interruption. That the financial burden was right up there too. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. Wow. So you all have, um, when you had your final meeting, this was your centerpiece. Mm -hmm. Each person at the table mm -hmm. that was at the luncheon received one of those with a red rose. Mm -hmm. And our motto is, a rose to the living is worth more than other things. <laughs> a wreath to <laughs> So we chose to give everyone a red rose. <laughs> and and you gave the history, I think, at, at your luncheon. Yes, we did. Yes. Uh -huh. You gave the history. Did you have any other speakers or did you uh, all? Well, we had a jazz. Peter DeVisi and, and uh, Jill, Jillian Coker uh, from the Arts Partnership mm -hmm. were there. They came mm -hmm. and uh, so we presented them with a certificate of an award for their uh, work with the arts in the community because mm -hmm. we felt like they were doing a great thing, you know, that we really needed. And you all have done a great thing. Oh my gosh. Thank you. And all the Oklahoma years. City Jazz Club was our entertainment mm -hmm. that day. That day, uh -huh. But each year at the banquet, which is the kickoff banquet for the new upcoming season, mm -hmm. Uh, they usually have an artist a, uh, who does painting mm -hmm. or sculpture or, mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. And this year, uh, our artist was Marion McDowell and Edward, and we went to the uh, UCO and we went through all the archives. UCO was wonderful. They, they've just been such a supporter. So that's where all the memorabilia is. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And they said, take whatever you need, and we set up tables and tables, and they came as representation too. and showed all the old pictures, all of our old presidents, uh, the things that they did. They, it was just a, a very nice. And these ladies nice. really worked hard to get the archives and worked getting them accepted there. It's, it's wonderful to know that they're here for yeah. everybody. <laughs> they will be there for years to come for people who want to write papers at school mm -hmm. or whatever, the archives are there. It's a it's a part of history. It is part of history. Yeah. You know, when Peter was In looking through the art, art artifacts, he found uh, <gasps> an early right. program about. Uh, he said it was probably the first art festival that was ever done here in Oklahoma City. Oh, really? And, mm -hmm. and the uh -huh. McDowell Club was part of that. They, they were yeah. the one that put it together. Isn't so he was amazing. amazed to see that. And I, I, I think it was back in the 40s mm -hmm. when that happened. So, so is, is this kind of um, all over the United States? Are these, um, used to there were 400 clubs, so what? Is, what there are now, we think, probably less than five. Oh. Marion wrote to uh, her friend, Mrs. Bull, here mm -hmm. in Oklahoma City in 19, I don't know if I put down the actual date that she, she wrote that, uh, but she died in like 1950 when she was like 98 or something like that, um, 98. 
And she said, I think, and that was in 1957, that there, I have a feeling there are less than 400 clubs mm -hmm. now. That was then. So we're thinking, oh, I think she said less than 300 clubs. Mm -hmm. And so we researched, and as far as we could find, was less than five. Mm -hmm. But the main colony is still going strong, mm -hmm. and it's still accepting people to come in and enjoy the cottages and create. Mm -hmm. And they still have speakers, they still have meetings, they still grow, and they accept donations, and they give out awards, and they have big banquets. Mm -hmm. It's just that the outlying clubs are dwindling. Mm -hmm. and they accept and welcome visitors mm -hmm. there yes. at all times. It's an open. And a lot, yes. uh, you know, a lot of clubs are running into that because uh, women work. They're at work most of the day. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's it's yeah. kind of a problem throughout, throughout I think. Yeah. It but is, yeah. It's a great loss is what it is. It is yeah. mm -hmm. to the community, yeah. Um, so, You've had your final meeting, but you're going to have one, one more board meeting. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> and the friendships that have developed through the years. Oh. Uh, we will periodically try and have a meeting every three or four months. Mm -hmm. A luncheon. Mm -hmm. Who knows what will happen. Well, Skeeter and Betty and Karen, thanks for coming in to tell you're our welcome. viewers about this wonderful club. You're welcome. You all were so proud to reach 100 years. What a history you've left behind for the UCO Library. This information is as an important contribution to the history of Oklahoma. We thank all of you for your excellent work in preserving this memorabilia for all Oklahomans. And thanks for coming in to tell us about the Bell Club. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.